We are officially starting the PCT. I can't believe this is here. I'm so excited and nervous. Good morning. Oh, it's my last day. Oh gosh, so many emotions. But right now the main one is that I'm really cold. <laughs> that was the last time I put away my tent on the Pacific Crest Trail. Dang, it's a lot of <laughs> tent setups and takedowns and everything in between. But I'm ready, you guys. I hope you are too. <laughs> Here we go, last day. So it only took me four months to finally get all my gear for my PCT through hike. And let me tell you, it smells really bad. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is my sleep system in my pack. All right, what we have here is a pack, a trash compactor bag to keep important items dry when it's raining, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, my tent with tent stakes, a ground sheet, and trekking poles. My pack is from Waymark Gear Company. It is 50 liters and frameless. I absolutely loved it. It is still in amazing shape. There are a few little holes from me from like certain things getting stuck in there and then me ripping it out, but this isn't very important or vital. Everything else is in wonderful shape. Let's flip this over. It's very dirty, but it means I put it to some good use. And I did an initial review on this pack, which I will link below. And I will be doing a final review on the pack, so I will be able to go in more detail about it at another time. This back over. Now the trash compactor bag I had at the end. In the beginning, I did have a pack cover. I went up sending the pack cover home because I wasn't really using it. And then once the weather started to get pretty bad, I picked up one of these. And basically, if I knew it was going to rain, I would put my sleeping bag inside of here, my thermals, maybe my electronics, all the important things that I needed to stay dry so that I could sleep and make it through the night. Here is my sleeping bag. This is a Sea to Summit pouch. And my sleeping bag is an REI Magma 17 degree. And I started off with a Nemo Rave sleeping bag, which I still absolutely love, but uh, it was shedding too much and it was getting way too cold. So I had to pick up a new one and I will be doing a more thorough video review on my sleep system, including this bag. But there's that. My sleeping pad of choice is a Thermarest Z-Light. At first, it was really hard to get used to because it's not very comfortable, as you can see like how thin it got over time. But I actually got really used to it and I really enjoyed it. It is the easiest sleeping pad that exists. It's like an accordion style, so you just obviously undo this Velcro and then you pop it down and it's all good to go. I actually wound up cutting some of um, the pads off because it was too long and to make it a little bit lighter which is kind of funny because it's already really light. But there's that bad boy. The little bit of my sleeping pad that I cut off, I kept it at home, but another option you can use if you do cut this off is it becomes a little seat pad when you're out hiking. So I know a lot of people used their extra bit for that, or even they just brought that as a seat pad and had a different sleeping pad, like an inflatable one. But this is another option for that. For my tent, I had a Z-Pack Solplex, and I also did an initial review on this and will be doing a final review on it soon. But this is my tent, and I have my trekking poles here because that's what I use to hold up my tent. Here are some tent stakes, and I got rid of the Z-Pack's tent stakes because they just weren't heavy duty enough so I picked up some bigger ones which I highly recommend um, because sometimes there's a lot of crazy wind on the PCT and my tent just couldn't hold up using the lightweight stakes. Then here we have a very dirty and a very smelly Tyvek sheet. I actually picked it up uh, 
I think more than halfway into my hike and I loved it and I wish I had it sooner for mainly when I cowboy camped. I cowboy camped a lot in the desert and that would have been really great and useful but I never used it when I put it in my tent. Uh, the Z-Pack Soulplex material is really strong that I didn't have any issues with putting the tent straight down onto the ground. So the Tyvek was basically for when I cowboy camped or I was camping on snow to add just a little bit extra layer of warmth because at times like that you, you'll do anything. Next we're just going to look at all the shoes I wore on trail, my gaiters, my socks, my camp shoes, and all of that. Since everybody's feet are different, this is not going to be the same for every hiker. But I usually got about 800 to 900 miles in each pair of my shoes, roughly. And there are some people who have to swap out shoes every 500 miles. So you just have to keep that in mind. But I actually got through the whole hike in four pairs of shoes. The pair that I started off with were Ultra Lone Peaks 3.5s. They're very dirty, as you can see. These were size nines. I'm usually a size eight, but Ultra Lone Peaks tend to be a little bit smaller and you also want to account for that extra room in your shoe. So I went up a whole foot size and they fit wonderfully. I really enjoyed these actually. And I felt like my feet felt really good in them. I had to get over the initial period of having a zero drop shoe. And I tried to do that before I left for the hike because I know a lot of people have Achilles problems if they just jump into a zero drop shoe without their legs and their calves and their Achilles and all that being adjusted to it. One thing I love about Alter Lone Peaks is they have the gator traps already in there. This Velcro right here. And these are my gators. They're from Dirty Girl Gators. Just a little bit of material. Nothing fancy here, but once you have your socks on and I would put this around my ankle, slip my shoe on, and then you take this little hook, hook it to this little piece up here, and then you would, oh gosh, where we are. Okay, and then you would take this um, piece of Velcro and it would attach to this little gator trap. And then you have your gaiters. So once I needed to get a new pair of shoes, I stayed with Ultra Lone Peaks. These are also 3.5, just different colors. And I actually even had to bump up an extra half size. So these are at nine and a half. I got the second pair of shoes at Kennedy Meadows and I had already walked and hiked about a couple hundred miles in my original shoes before I started trail. So it was around like 900 miles. And I think if I just put new insoles in them, everything would have been fine. The shoe still is pretty durable. Um, however, I didn't wear any insoles, which is pretty uncommon. A lot of people use some kind of insole like Superfeet or any other brand, but I did not. But I think I could get a new pair of insoles and put them in the shoe and then be able to keep wearing them. So the Ultra Lone Peaks, I feel like really lasted me on the trail. But my feet still started to grow and the only blisters I got on trail were going into Tehachapi. It was an extremely hot day and my feet were now too small for my shoes and therefore I got the only blisters on trail. So with these shoes, yeah, I bumped up half a size. They're nine and a halfs. The tread is still okay on them and I think I did another 800 or so miles in these. So pretty good pair of shoes. I was starting to deal with some foot pain around the time I, a little bit before Syed Valley. And so Hoka One One actually reached out and they're like, we'd love to send you some shoes. So I was like, okay. And so when I was in Syed Valley, that's where they sent the shoes. I switched over to these bad boys. These are the Hoka One Torrents. And these made my feet feel so much better. And I didn't even realize my feet were hurting that bad until I switched. Now these specific uh, style shoes, I think have a four or five millimeter drop, which is why my foot probably felt so much better because I was going from a zero drop to something more cushiony. Um, and I liked them so much that I wound up staying with them for the rest of my hike. So these are the torrents. Now, as much as I love the shoe and would probably wear them again, 
they did seem to fall apart much quicker than my ultras. Um, this isn't like a big deal for hiking purposes, but I feel like I'd have to swap these shoes out more. As you can see, just a little wear and tear. Here, we got this over here. But overall, the shoe made my feet feel so much better for, especially when I was starting to do those 25 to 30 to 35 miles a day. And then these shoes are what I finished in. These don't have that many miles on them actually. So I can definitely keep wearing them. You can tell they're all pretty dirty and muddy. I actually went back down to a size nine for both of these because they don't run as small as ultras, but they felt great in my feet. However, the one another little problem was because I was getting these shoes on trail, they don't have the gaiter traps. So I actually didn't wear any gaiters with these. So actually when you get your um, gaiters in from Dirty Girl Gaiters, they actually send us some strips of Velcro. You cut it, place it, and stick it on your shoe yourself. And so I could have done that, but I was on trail, didn't have any Velcro, so I just went without gaiters. I highly, highly, highly recommend gaiters because I never had any rocks in my shoes. And the first day that I wore these hokas, I was having rocks in my shoes every hour and having to like get them out. And eventually you get used to it and you just leave them in there, but I definitely will always try to use gaiters if possible. I didn't have to worry about like a rock in your shoe and everyone knows how annoying that can be. So let's talk about my sock system. These particular socks have dog hair on them, but we will just ignore it. So what I did was I every day wore some sort of Njinji toe liner minus the dog hair. I'm not even gonna worry about taking that off. So this, my gosh, there's so much dog hair. How did this even happen? This is probably Molly. Anyway, so I would wear, these are very thin, they're liners. They're not like full thick socks. I would wear these and these little toe socks, I think prevented my blisters. It was amazing. And I don't actually have them anymore, but on top of my toe socks, I wore thin smart wool socks. Now, I don't know where they are. They had so many holes in them, I think I just threw them away. Aha, I found my smart wool socks. <laughs> so yeah, these are what I would wear on top of my Njinji's. These ones got some pretty bad holes in them. Look at this heel one. Yeah, that was going into Tehachapi. I'm pretty sure that this was the pair. I didn't realize how often I would have to buy new socks. So keep that in mind. You will be changing socks very often and your feet will very much so appreciate that. Now, when I switched over to my Hoka ones and I didn't have my gaiters, really liked these in Gingies because they went up to you know, mid calf and it helped some of the, the rocks not getting into my socks or my shoes. Um, but love these. And then when I slept, I had a pair of darn tufts. Oh my gosh, more little, these are feathers now from my sleeping bag. Oh well, we'll clean that up later. Okay, so these are wonderful, durable, amazing socks. I know a lot of people hike in these, I don't like how hot my feet get in these kinds of wool socks, so I just kept them for sleeping. As for camp shoes, I love having camp shoes. Some people choose not to. These are bedrock sandals, and I have, I think, the most durable pair. There's thinner pairs and therefore lighter pairs. These are a bit heavy, but these were so amazing to put on when I was going through a lot of streams and I didn't want my socks and shoes to get wet or I could wear my toe socks with them as well. And I started hiking in them a bit towards the end and my feet really liked being free like that. I would only do it about eight to 10 miles at a time because my insoles of my feet would start to hurt. But I think I really wanna to try to start hiking in these more totally enjoyed these, love them. My clothing is what I think I switched up the most. I had my like, core basics that I kept the whole way, but I kept having some new kinds of shirts or 
hats or beanies or things like that. And I would keep switching that out. But this is what I ended up with when I made it to the Northern Terminus. This is the shirt I wore pretty much every single day. It's from Arcteryx and it's just a like lightweight, breathable, like basic material, nothing fancy about it. And it is long sleeve, which I really like because I have light skin and I try to keep, you know, as much as my body protected as possible. This is a Patagonia sports bra. Literally wore this every single day and it's still soft and comfy. These are hiking pants. Do, do, do. Okay, so these hiking pants are from the brand Cole. Where is the, yeah, upside down right there. Like I said, I really try to wear these as much as possible to keep my legs covered. But then the desert and certain times got so hot that I just could not do it. And then I put on my shorts. This was my second pair. Tell how dirty they are. They're from Patagonia. My first pair of shorts were from Arcteryx, but I lost so much weight that I needed to get some new ones. I actually wound up starting to wear these a lot in the end just because it became more comfortable. And especially when it starts to rain, I didn't have rain pants, so I just would wear my shorts. This is my cheap and not so fancy rain jacket. It is from Frog Togs. It was about like $20 and it got some good use near the end of my hike. It did its job 100%. Um, these do tend to be known as cheaper options. So if you are trying to save money, I would definitely look into getting frog togs. But I would probably invest into a nicer rain jacket for my next hike. And this one also smells really bad. So it's got to go. This is my windbreaker that I had in the beginning of trail. It's from Cotopaxi, I loved it. I wound up sending it home, so I did not finish with this because I didn't need it anymore, I thought. So something I will do next time is get a windbreaker slash rain jacket in one. So I would just have both of these in one jacket. I picked up this cotton shirt in a thrift store in Palm Springs when me and some other hikers were waiting out a storm and I love it. So this would be like my sleep shirt. It was just always nice to go to bed with something really soft and comfy against my body, nothing wet or anything like that. And I would always wear this in town when I was doing laundry or something like that. This is one of my favorite pieces of clothing. This is my down jacket from Mountain Hardware. I got this years and years ago at REI on sale. It was still like $279, but it was marked down like from over $400. So I just randomly picked it up and this is what I took on my hike with me. Any down jacket really will do its job, but make sure you get something warm and light. I could just shove this in my pack however I want and it didn't compromise the integrity of it. So make sure you get yourself a good down jacket. It does get cold. Then I always made sure to have some kind of hat. You know, it could be anything that just covered my face. I try to wear as much as possible. I did enjoy my bandanas. I have a lot of hair and sometimes I just, like as you can see, there's just hair everywhere. So something like this really kept me sane when wisp, so wispies want to get my face and anybody with long hair knows how annoying that can be sometimes. Then I also always had some kind of a beanie and I also had uh, gloves. I have outdoor research gloves, and these are actually the covers I would put on top of them to make them waterproof if needed. Forget my thermals when I slept. I love these pairs of things. <laughs> they are from Smart Wool, and they're just nice quality thermals that kept me warm and dry. And I wound up ditching some of my headbands for just one buff. These buffs I think are amazing because like I said, I can use it as a headband to hold my hair back or my wispies back. But especially when I got caught in a snowstorm near the end of trail, I was able to use this to cover most of my face from the snow and the sleet and the crazy wind. Here I had some Patagonia underwear. Make sure you find something really soft and won't cause friction. 
for all men and women out there. These were wonderful. I don't know what kind they were, but they made my tush feel good. And I used these for a bit. I would have really liked to start with these in the desert when I was really exposed to the sun. I actually developed some pretty gnarly blisters on the top of my hand, even though I was putting sunscreen on. So I actually really highly recommend these. Um, at first I felt dorky, and I know that sounds really silly, but um, you get used to them and your hands will thank you. So for my water filtration system, I used a Sawyer Squeeze. I went through two, so this is what I ended with. This was my second one. As you can tell, it gets pretty like beat up. You can see my teeth marks from trying to like pop it open. Um, I would attach these to smart water bottles. I don't have them with me or any kind of bottle like that that has the same size um, nozzle, we'll say. Uh, these are great because they have a pretty long life regarding to how many like uh, uses you can have with it. Uh, but you know my o-ring fell out somewhere that happens a lot with these but you just gotta make sure you keep track of it and just push it back in um, and yeah sometimes these have to be cleaned pretty regularly or else like the squeeze will start to slow but you just get used to it and you do what you need to do I will probably continue to use these I really enjoyed it and um, it just made it really easy and there's a lot of other options out there, so it just depends what your preference is, but yeah, I'm going to definitely stick with a Sawyer Squeeze. So if your Sawyer Squeeze has a lot of gunk in it and really slows down, you're gonna need one of these bad boys. They usually come with those Sawyer Squeeze when you buy it. It's just like a plunger. You fill it with water and you put this little nozzle tip on like one of the openings of the Sawyer Squeeze and you just keep pushing this through, water will run through it, and you'll see a lot of mud and rocks and dirt come out. You'll probably have to do this several times, like periodically. Um, I didn't carry one of these, but I would always find some in the hiker boxes because people would get a whole Sawyer squeeze like sent to them in some town, and they didn't want to carry this, so they would just throw it into a hiker box, and I would use this. I chose to go stoveless on the entire hike and I absolutely loved it actually. So I don't have any kind of stove or anything like that. And I was cold soaking for parts of the trail, meaning I just had like a cold soaking container, but I wound up ditching that and not really using it. And I just basically ate protein bars and various other things. And I'll do a video on what I ate at, at another time. So my like kitchen setup, is really easy. Ta-da! This is it, folks. I ended the hike with my food bag. It is made out of Cuban fiber and it's from Waymark Gear and a titanium spork. This is just some miscellaneous items. Here are some bear spray that I actually wound up carrying starting halfway through my hike because of my fun little mountain lion encounters. Oh yeah. Ziploc bags were like gold on the trail. Big ones for a trash, little ones for various other things. And um, a lot of times things that you want come in like heavy packaging and unnecessary packaging and weight. So you would usually dump a whole bunch of stuff into a Ziploc baggie. It also helped me keep certain things more organized. Here comes Chili Dog. Oh, stretch. Ow, baby. Thank you. Oh. I put all of my first aid kit and hygiene products into just a little protective bag to help keep things organized. I am going to post a video with more detail on all of my hygiene and my first aid kit supplies, but it's always good to have some sort of first aid kit and obviously hygiene, please. So uh, I usually had some kind of wet wipes and you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, a little brush for my hair, things like that. Body Glide, which I actually didn't have to use very often, thankfully, but I know a lot of people did. Sunscreen was a big deal for me. Uh, as you know, if you watch any of my videos, I put some fun colors on my face. Luco Tape, which I never had to use because my blisters were like non-existent. And then this is what I had all my first aid kit stuff in. 
Chili Dog wants to talk about electronics next. So I had my InReach Garmin GPS. The screen got a little scratched up, but it still works wonderfully. I love this thing, I highly recommend it. So does Chili Dog. It allowed me to two-way message my family, my friends when I was out of cell phone service range. Um, sometimes I got lost and my GPS on my phone wasn't showing me that clearly where I was, so I would return to this. Like I said, highly recommend it. And you never know if there's gonna be an emergency where you need to call a flight crew or something for yourself or somebody else. So this plus the charging cord. I have this big ol' anchor battery pack here along with its charging cord. This thing gave me about seven iPhone charges. And I have my adapters and all my charging cords and my iPhone, which I have in my hand right now, with a very durable case. So make sure you get one of those. Next is a headlamp. I had a black diamond. And make sure you always carry spare batteries. Everything was put into this a little bag. I call this my electronics bag. It got really beaten up. Some cords would always get stuck through and I'd rip it, but it allowed me to keep everything organized. Also, I had headphones, which are not pictured. Some more miscellaneous items here. I wore prescription glasses on the trail sometimes, and so I had those glasses plus my lightweight case I just found at some random store. Earplugs, I try to use earplugs on the trail multiple times, but they just never worked for me, but I always kept them just in case. A compass, a knife, a lighter, which I would wrap duct tape around or luco tape or something like that. Duct tape is not pictured. Then this was my little wallet that I used, which I loved. It got <laughs> beaten up, but I put all of my permits in there, like my PCT permit, my Canada entry permit. If you have a fire permit, this is perfect. A debit card, a credit card, maybe some cash, stamps, etc. These items I had with me for the Sierra Nevada portion of the trail. It is required to carry a bear canister. So I have this big old bear vault here with some of my favorite stickers on it. I actually really love this thing. You can sit on it. It keeps all of your smelly stuff, whether it's food or hygienic products, you know, away from little critters. And um, the only real annoying part is that you have to carry it. And I did have a frameless pack, and so when that was in there, I made packing my bag a bit more fun, but it actually wasn't too bad. But it does add like an extra two pounds to your pack weight. Then because of the cold, I did bring an extra sleeping pad. This is an inflatable one. I really do like it, but once I got out of the really cold weather and high elevation, then I sent this back home. Just in case, I had my micro spikes that I actually never had to use, thankfully. Same with an ice axe, but you actually never know. Some people I was hiking around use theirs. I didn't have to, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. That is it for my gear for my PCT through hike. I would like to say that gear is actually something that you can change and probably will change while you are hiking. Unless you're an experienced through hiker and you've done a lot of long distance backpacking before, you'll know exactly what you like and what you don't like. I didn't really have that, so I changed it along the way. I always carried way too much food, but as you can see on my first day on trail, compared to near the end of my trail, look how much smaller my pack got. And I just wanna say that to hopefully encourage some of you that it's okay to not really know what you're doing or to not really know if what you're buying is gonna be right for you because you get to change it. I grew a lot as a through hiker and I feel like now I have my gear pretty dialed down and it, but it took time. And so just try to have patience with yourself and try not to freak out too much about if what you're getting is the right things to be getting. So just remember that every single person that stepped foot on the PCT has a different gear setup. And think about all of the people that have finished 
last year, the year before, and all the years before that, everybody finished with a different gear setup, okay? So what's right for someone is not gonna be right for you. I would just go with your gut, test things out, and choose what works best for you. One piece of advice that I would give anybody who's attempting their first through hike, or even their 10th one, is to really make sure that the pack that they have and the shoes on their feet fits them as best as possible. Now there's a chance that you may think the shoes are wonderful for you, and then as you start doing 15, 20, 25 miles a day, every day, you may realize that they're causing you more pain, and you might have to switch it up like I did, but overall, try to make sure that those two pieces of gear are really dialed in. Everything else is, for the most part, pretty easy to change, not really gonna impact your hike too much, but your pack and your shoes are very important. Are you having fun looking at all this gear? Julie Doc, I'm trying to do a video. Okay, he's gonna be in. Okay, so what we have here, look at them. One, two, looking at me like, what are you doing? Huh? Auto. Guess who wants to be in the gear video? Chili dog. Oh, thank you. Chili dog is probably gonna make multiple appearances. Huh, oh, loving.